Hello, everyone. Welcome. Okay, let me share the screen. Everybody can see it? Okay. See your screen. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, welcome again to the SolidCamp uh, webinars about the Swiss type. I'm Igor from the technical support team from Serbia. So, today I'll present you Swiss type part programming in general and the rules that we apply to them. So, this one is the part one. So, we will cover the basics. So, let's, let's get started. So. <clears throat> Okay, what is the main goal of this webinar? Since we are a developer for a few years back that we can fully support the Swiss types, we, we occurred many problems uh, uh, general to Swiss type machines because they are uh, too much difficult. Yeah, they, there are a lot of uh, difference in the, each of them. So we struggled to standardize, for example, the part programming. So that is the main goal of this webinar, to make the part uh, easy for the customer and for us to handle, for example, the GPP and VMID. So it's also very good to be optimized to VMID change formalization. So it's uh, very good when we are sharing parts uh, uh, between us. So we can immediately just load, for, uh, change the VMID and our, our part is immediately functioning. Uh, so, and it's also very important for a customer because um, uh, some customers which are new with the Swiss types, they want to try many things, different machines. So each of these machines can be really different. So they want to move the part from one machine to another. Uh, so we can have uh, easy access and uh, no geometry failure or some, some other stuff. So we are now will teach you how to do it very easily and very optimized for, for the part programming. Okay, for, to, for part one topics, we'll speak about the coordinate system manager. How is it good to apply the coordinate system? It's very important. Uh, stock uh, tool table and configurations, also the holder, how we should handle. Then we'll speak about uh, machining data, which is a very specific uh, topic for each machine. We'll handle the setup, how you should position your, your part and machining length, and what is the machining length in general. Then we'll explain you uh, do some operations. So this part will, I will do as much as fast as I can because the operation is based uh, on our Milton module. So it will probably not have a big issue for you, yeah? And the link rules. There's a special link rules that needs to be applied only for Swiss types because um, uh, some things can, uh, uh, um, some things you really need to take care about when you're changing the tools, when you're moving from milling to turning, when you're machining from face or radial. So, so there is a few few things needs to be explained. So we'll start with the part, part one uh, programming. Now, so uh, for the programming structure, as you can see from the left side is um, uh, operational tree. So I divide it into some groups so you can better understand. So every Swiss type machine have a, a bar feed, bar feeder. So uh, usually, not usually, but in the 99% it's on main spindle. So all, every Swiss type have a bar, bar feeder. So we always start with the main spindle operations. So after we are done with the main spindle operation, we are moving to, to do the cutoff. So this, the, uh, this um, rules apply if you want to run two channel synchronization. So most of the Swiss type have a main spindle and back spindle or a sub spindle. So you can run independently to increase the cycle time of the machining. Um, then we have a, a cutoff related MCOs, so before the cutoff, so you can prepare everything, uh, catch the part with the back spindle position, everything on, on the place. Uh, of course, once you catch the part uh, with the back spindle, the Z1 axis and Z2 axis becomes one axis, which in our situation we call the superimposition axis. And then we are able to do the cutoff or continue machining. If we are done with our part with cutoff, we can then release part from a main spindle and return back to the back spindle, which is now a fourth point, the cutoff related MCO after the cutoff. After that, we have a uh, back spindle operation, usually, yes. And um, 
on end, we must have some part release. So since the uh, you finish whole part machining, then you must eject a part from the back spindle in order to continue the cycle of a whole machining process. So we, um, that that would be all for this page. So let's see our part now. So okay, this is our part. We have uh, many features here. So turning, milling, drilling, everything from the each side. We even have a uh, some inclined here, uh, milling and drilling. Yeah. So okay, I will now explain you one um, solid cam settings that should be, for example, as a default maybe for uh, for the Swiss type programming. I'll go to solid can settings. I'll go to automatic uh, camper definition into a Milton page. And the most important is to create coordinate system for each station and even for the opposite side. So this uh, we controlled uh, good the, the MAC orientation according to our part and also by the definition of our VMID. So this is the most important and for the simulation collision control be sure that your collision detect mode interpolation. So now it's the default. So it's the best way to control here. Okay, I'll now create the cam parts. Filter. Okay, I have already uh, selected the machine, which is Star SR38. It's uh, one of the uh, complex Milton machines. It's a two channel, of course. I will show you kinematic and the capabilities of this machine later. So let's focus now on the coordinate system. So the first coordinate system that will be on main spindle would be the side which have uh, a lot more features to, 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 uh, to process to the machine, yeah, because on the main spin, the more, the more on either uh, on each uh, three step machines uh, on the main spin, we have the most of the tools so that you can run almost every single part, everything on the back spin, it's very limited tools you can have there. So the main spin side should, should always be the, the one side that you can do uh, the most of the things, yeah. Okay, so I'll choose. Um, center of revolution phase. And now, some Swiss type machines have a different orientation than this one that we see right now, right? So I will just jump back to my presentation. And we have here output coordinates for different machines. For example, on Tornos, as you see, on the main spindle, which is on our left side, usually uh, the output coordinates uh, is, uh, Turning, for example, it's come from the plus the Z plus positive direction. So uh, when you when you're going inside the material, it will be negative. When you transfer the parts to the back spindle, the coordinate system becomes opposite. So something similar to Okuma machines, if you know it, right? When we move to the citizen space type, the the um, uh, coordinate system and the main spindle is on the right side and the Z it's pointing towards the, the part. So when you are starting, for example, turning operation, the negative side, it's always the safe or, or approach side and uh, material uh, removal is on the Z positive side. Of course, in the back spindle, it's also opposite as you see. And for example, the Sogami, which have a synchronous system for each side. So again, we cannot, so we must choose one one uh, which will cover everything. So in this case, it's impossible, of course, but we want to do, as I speak in the, on the start of this webinar, we must standardize this uh, COM part so we can share and customer is it use and change from machine to machine. Who will done this? Of course, uh, VMID and GPP will do this conversation. So, so for, for the part programming, you always do the same. And it's like this, right? like an usual Milton that we used to do. So let's do it. I'm pointing uh, Z direction outwards of the part, circuit, and it will immediately create me my second one. 
Okay, let's just uh, fix the levels. This is too big. You can change it um, in the compass settings in the defaults because the Swiss type parts are really small. So this uh, is not too much. Is too much. So I will need to decrease it for now. Okay. And we have immediately created our math cube, which is opposite as we needed. I'll click OK. Let's create our stock. For this example, I will do the creation of the stock like we in Milton we usually do. I'll just select the solid, for example, 0, 05 from the right side for facing, 0, 05 from the left, and for example, two millimeters in external. Okay. I'll select the target, one and only. Perfect. We are done now with the basic configurations of the Swiss type. So here in machine options for the specific machines, we can change something that is called machine data parameters. So here, uh, these parameters is actually the macro variables that it's used by, by some of the cycles of uh, of the G code. Of course, this is this is totally different from machine to machine. And it, it, if you don't understand some of them, you can just feel contact the support to explain. So it's easily to change it here by the uh, CAM programmer, of course, in the solid CAM, and it will be generated inside the G code. So you can operator will be immediately seen at the start of a G code. They can easily maybe modify, modify it or, or or do something about it. So so I'll just leave it by default by by how I have it here. And also this is not the only one. There is also a, a few a few more which are comes directly from the CAT system, which is more important than this uh, optional one. And it's of course the diameter of the stock of the bar, I mean, the length of the the part and, and other important features for the maybe cutoff and so on. Okay, so we are finished with the comfort creation. And click OK. Okay, so let's talk about machine. I'll go into setup because it's easier to get here, the machine preview. The machine preview plays the main role in creation, the compart operation and the tools for the Swiss type machine. Every time you have a possibility to, to open it, do it, so use it, of course. So, okay, this uh, machine from our left side is uh, chakra for the bar. And this type is a guide bush, uh, guide bush type, which means that we have a guide bush which is affixed on this uh, guide bush device and the part will slide through it right okay so on our right side we have a back spindle we have a front tools which as i said is um, the most the tools that it's uh, uh, is on the main spindle side so you can put it to Mach one position one on the place when, when you uh, where you have the most of the things to do uh, of course, uh, the axis is, of course, the standard one, X, Y. On part, as I said, is uh, on the parts, Z axis. We have also this B axis, which comes with this uh, device. It can do uh, indexial milling, also simultaneous, but it also can do one more thing. It can rotate a little bit more, so it can do the same thing on the back spindle. So it's very, very complex. Of course, we have here the fixed tools, which doesn't have the drive units. So you can put here on the face tools for, for a drilling and boring or um, uh, internal turning. And for the back spindle that we can control, here we have uh, uh, tools that can run only on the back spindle. So you also have the Y axis. It, which is uh, not so common, but in the, let's say 30% of the machine it is possible for the milling. Okay, 
So while I'm here in the setup, I want to show you one thing, which is the, I'll just return everything to on positions, which is the machining length. Okay, here is our chakra. Imagine we have a bar here and the chakra is now on the limit, so it cannot go any further to extract the parts more further so we can, we can catch him with the tools. So if I go more further to machine something, I don't have any more value, uh, any more uh, lim limit and values for, I mean, the bar amount. So what we'll do now here, we can put it in, we can load this amount here, for example, by the length of the part. So our length uh, here of the part is, let's see, it's 45 millimeters. So at least 45 millimeters you need to extract the bar. But why I say extract, it means uh, uh, that we are this doing in the in the cam part, uh, in the solid cam, right? So when I do 45 millimeters, the parts will move a little bit in the front, which will, will load material from behind. But what will happen on machine, this part will not move anywhere, but the chucker or a checking device of the bar will unclub the bar and go by that amount behind and repump it. So you can have this limit. Uh, issue. So this is the machining length, in fact. So I'll put more than 45 uh, millimeters so I can grab them with all the tools. I'll put 17 and that would be good. Um, also, what is important, we don't have any fixtures for a uh, for, uh, uh, main spindle because we have a guide bush which is not moving. If I apply here any fixture, it will move together with the z-axis, which is not allowed in this case. So it's not happened. But on the deck spindle, you can put it the fixture if you have some um, extensions, for example, uh, extensions uh, for the catching part. If the part is too long, for example, and you don't have any spaces inside your, your deck spindle, you should uh, clamp it with some external uh, quallets or, or chucking devices. So, but for this example, I will not use it because the part is short. Um, I think I'm done here. Oh, of course, uh, we need to predefine the, the position when we are uh, doing the clamp on the back spindle. So for a short moment, I will just put the stock inside the bar and I will move it the clamping value by, for example, 27. I will do machine till here, so it can go to the clamping. And then after we do the part transfer, I can then approach this geometry and do the machining. Okay, don't forget to stop in back inside the main spindle and I will do okay. Okay, so we're now prepared for the operation. So we are done the main parts, so Okay, the first and the most important tool is the cutoff tool. So immediately you will create it. So in, in this in part of the table now I don't have anything. So once you create it, every tool at the customer or customer itself, he will just export the tool libraries and maybe update in the VMID so it can just uh, reload on the next part creation and he will have immediately all the tools which is uh, very easily all folders and everything inside. And here I'll create um, our cutoff tool, which is the tool number one. And also on every Swiss type machine, there is predefined, uh, predefined the tool number or tool position on the machine uh, to do the cutoff. So in this case, it's T1. Uh, I will move the tooltip position everything to zero because by VMID definition, we define the station to a point where it's recommended by the user, uh, by the, sorry, by, by the manufacturer that you should put the part in the same level to not have any collision while you're switching the, switching the tools, of course. So when we do this and we put everything by the zero, our cutoff point will come immediately on this point. So, okay. I'll change my tool width and the W also should be same. And one thing I left is to modify the shank 
which for this uh, position it's 20 times 20 square and, and now this is the right uh, right uh, cutoff tool if you want to you can change it to the left it's now a problem i'll just refresh this page Let's see okay but at this diameter i need to put it back for um, 20 millimeters back Okay, so we define our first uh, tool for the cutoff. And our tool is tool station one and number one. Our customer requires to be with the hundreds, so you can maybe change something, uh, some other uh, cutoff points. But this is available in 2020, like you can fix it. So I will just in each tool do a double zeros here on the five tool number. Okay, we're ready to start our first operation. This was a uh, long part for uh, talking, so let's do now some operations. I'll do face, for example. No, actually, as I explained you already, the first uh, operations should be always done by, by this device, if you have some internal parts or drilling and everything, because these tools can be very, very big uh, and, and long, so you can maybe have a collision while you're moving and switching them a lot. So it's better to use only this uh, this holder here to do everything that you can on the part and then move to the other tools. This can also vary from machine to machine. So I will start for a um, turn drill operation. I'll create my tool. Mounting immediately, activate. I'll put it in the, let's see. We change the turret from the front and we will apply some holders in it. So since this is a fixed device, we can only apply the holders, which is only for a, a fixed tools like a slaves or maybe some other things. I have also the STL libraries, so if someone wants, just let me know. I will share you a few libraries. Okay, let's back to here and let's see our diameter of the tool. It's three millimeters. Okay, and now I will a little shorten this this tool because it can probably the catch with the, with the part to do some damage. We don't want that. A station is number 11, so I'll put 11 and this 100. So save it, drill end. Okay. I'll just calculate. Okay, let's see in our simulation how it looks. Okay, regarding these links, I think this one is better because you can freely approach no matter which size, maybe if customer uh, missed the length or something, the, the tool tooltip will come immediately in the front of, uh, of the part. If you put it immediately on the Z only it, and the tool it's much longer, it can maybe intersect with the part. So th this link is pretty much fine from the right safety corner. Okay, now we'll do a face operation. We'll use the solid. So in the most cases, please use solid because we have a nice uh, synchronization with the geometry every time you change it. I'll create a new tool now. External turning. Immediately put the tool position to a zeros. Do the shape. And the shank, I think it's smaller than the cutoff one. So it's, I think, 16 by 16. Also, the shank width should be the same amount as this M dimension. So it can be uh, 
a totally mounted inside. So I'm going to just put it 16 here also. So it's perfect. Uh, don't forget to change every time the tool, you'll get the warning message. And let's do the finish. And we are done. Let's see the simulation. Nice. Okay, let's do the audio turning. Let's remain this. So it's selection. I'll modify the geometry to approach to the end of the stack. This is the automatically by tangency, so I will move it to uh, direct to the part and auto extend to the end of the stock. Perfect. I'll select the same tool. Okay, and I will do the finish. So let's calculate it. So the toolpath from now looks very familiar with uh, all the, the Milton machines, but this one have uh, uh, two, two bad things. So that's why I speak now today with the Swiss types. So what will happen? Once we start the machining from this position and we move part from this end and finish here, once we turn the part back, We'll have some scratches on inside. Why? So I'll show you in the simulation. So, okay. Once we start here, we lose our gym, we lose our OD of the part. So it cannot uh, anymore be guided by the guide bush. So once you return here and you're doing maybe some tough materials or like titanium or stainless steel. I'll just draw you here. You can maybe remains here few few chips like like bended over the, the surface. So once you return to this point here, it will go directly into the guide bush and it will probably scratch the guide. So it's important that you on the first pass to the uh, some some kind of uh, chamfer. So that is the first thing. Good that we that option already have. So you just activate this break material corner and again calculate it and we have it here. So let's take a look now once again. It will just go in this direction, reposition and do the chamfer and he will continue. We'll do the finish and we'll leave here our chamber. So this uh, movement is also not necessarily because we are again putting the part inside, which is not a problem now, but how are we going to machine this into a segment? So uh, try always to machine your part into some segments. Not, not much segments than is your, for example, guide bush length, because if you are doing all parts uh, with the turning and go back and forth, you will probably, um, you will do, of course, uh, uh, do the whole turning operation at once, but your uh, your part will probably fall off from the guide bush. So you must, every time for the Swiss type, uh, program from the segment. For example, as you see now, I program, for example, from this face to this face. So once I do this, with the turning, I must continue to do all operation in this area, and then we will move to the next. So the main point is that you will program your your part like this. We will do some turning. We'll move part forward. We'll do all the operation on this segment, and then we'll move forward. Then we'll do again on the second segment, segment and then we'll extract the part cut off and then move it to the backspin. So this is the main rule. So we'll follow that rule. 
So we're not continuing anymore to this going this operation, and we will focus now on this segment. Okay. So continue with uh, operation, just to remain this. Okay, so let's do something uh, from the face. Okay. I'll create a new wing operation, pocket. I'll click on this face with the smart face selection. We have open contour here, very good. So which tool will we use now? When I take a look, which, uh, which um, tool orientation can support my turret, I cannot see anything. So because, because this tool cannot be trial units, so this one can do radio, but this one is B-axis, so it can rotate right from the face. So I'll put it here. It's uh, tools from 17 to 19. Oh, I have it on my server. I'm creating a new link to Okay, I think um, four millimeters is okay. And now what you see here is part outside the holder. But uh, here, the, our STL model, not just STL model, but on a customer, uh, you all, all already have these holders. They are not changeable, they are fixed, so we don't need to, to select any holders for it. So every time you, you generate this tool, make sure that your NH length is same as outside holder. So when I change here outside holder, it doesn't put it uh, inside my inside the holder. So it's doing H line because outside holder means only when you have holder, but now you don't. So I'll move 4040 and maybe modify some other parameters. Perfect. This is station 17, 1700. Okay. I will select the upper level, pocket path. Technology, open pocket, I will approach from outside. And I think this one is good. Perfect. So let's drill and continue and drill the holes. Just remain this operation. I'll maybe use the C-axis for this one because it's uh, more easily for this machine. Let's do the drilling. Select face. Again, tool mounting. We cannot put the drill here because it doesn't have a, a drive unit, and this one is eccentric. So I'll create a new one. Drill. Three millimeters. H length again, same as outside holder. 18. Upper level is this lower surface, drill depth. Perfect. Maybe I can do some back strategy. Nice. Okay, for, so we are done from the face. Maybe we'll skip this, this thread mode to the inclined. So we'll continue to with the milling. So for this incline, we need a new position. So a new position for the Swiss type. 
you always use to start from the coordinate system. So it depends from machine to machine, which have advanced or not advanced options, like uh, uh, plane rotation. So it will easily to create it just from this point and climb by the plane or normal to the point, yeah. And I will just edit this one. Okay, now we can make a, some profile to skin the face. Map one position two. Oh, you just this line would be enough. Okay, let's see if I can use the tools. Maybe I can use the same tool here, which is four millimeters. It's totally fine. Let me check the geometry. So I will probably cut my threads here. So I want to offset this. Let's see the five is okay. Maybe to six and add one more path. In the clear offset, I will just uh, calculate for now to see what I did. I have extra links here for now, I don't need it. And I will add the uh, offset for off, uh, clear offset, maybe three millimeters for we'll check that. Okay, let's see. One, two, perfect. Perfect, okay, we have a, a three of them around the fourth axis, so I need to apply a transform. Include original operation and two steps with the 120 degrees. And that's, that's it, we still need to do the drilling. So we can rename this. Drilling. I do have three millimeters. I think it's the same on the B axis, right? Up the level and drill that. Nice. I'll just calculate it. It looks fine. So I'll apply again transformation. Perfect. <laughs> so by this operation, we finish our first segment, I think. So it simulates all operations here. Let's see, solid verify. We start with uh, drilling, facing. On the turning. And two more, I didn't include them. Let's see again. Perfect. Okay, so we're done with this segment. Our part was all the time outside the guide bush. So let's simulate that also in the machine simulation so we can see the better.
Okay. <clears throat> so our folders are applied, tools are here. So let's see. I usually simulate it in a time-based mode. So I think it's I think more and more nicer and smoother. So now we are just uh, retracting in the X direction and we are leaving our part, not inside, but just working from the outside, right? Now B axis now from the face. Drills. And in plain milling, we have a, one additional pass. Never mind. Okay, and the drilling also. Okay, so let's move to our second section. Mm -hmm. And with that, we will finish this machining on the main spindle. So we want to complete it. So, okay, we'll start with the, doing the turning on this uh, surface here. Go to the turning. Solid. I'll use on same phase. We can see now our envelope is showing material. I will just reverse it. I want to start it from this side. And I will use the same tool as before. Tool two. Okay, but I will not do the finish. I want to, to finish later after I done this operation because it will left me probably some um, then over bended this uh, chips, yeah. So I need to to cut them down before they can go inside or however. So just calculate it, and this movement and start point is, is very very wrong because we are immediately in this point we are putting our part inside the guide bush, which will probably be all be not guided when it go inside, and here it was the guiding length. So we must immediately start on the only X and leave only X. Of course, I don't want any more because this is a very small tool, but a uh, small uh, material to do. I don't want any more to retract back so I can go forward and, and backwards all the time. So I just um, increased step by one millimeter more and I will just leave it here and remain on that Z. So my part will remain from this point, will be in front of the guide bush. So I want to continue to work here. Okay, I'll, maybe I, it's better to, to extend this geometry here more. I just add that one and... Okay, simulated that. So we are done. We are done. Now we forget to, to cut this chamfer here. It's very dangerous if you don't cut it. So go back to the technology and break material on the corner. Nice. So go back to turning again and cut it. And then we can move to our milling things here. Okay, so let's continue.
Okay, uh, for this radial mountings, I need to to do uh, another position. I'll just check map one position one. It's fine. I think okay. Okay, I'll add another position. Same on the coordinate system point here, but normal to this face. I'll just put values in order. You'll get used with the with the levels once you start the programming. You will immediately see on the tool, but your your retracts and everything. So it comes by the experience. So don't worry. Okay, I will create a milling operation uh, for this surface here. I will use the profile for now. Mac composition tree. I will leave tangential selection right here. I will do it with one big tool and return it back. Okay. I'll create a tool. And now I have plenty of tools to choose here. Not now, but I will have. So I'll create a new one. 10 millimeters in diameter. And this is the T6 to T9 turtles. I'll change just fix this mounting direction. This um, <clears throat> this turtle already had this holder included inside the machine simulation. Again, they are not changeable. So we need again to use our H length to to put it so same as the outside tool holders. So I put maybe 30 and here 30. It's good. So somewhere it should be on the level where is your turning tools, right? If you put it more and your turning tool not re uh, retract, between tool changes it can happen some some collisions. But the worst that can happen is just uh, your tools break or something else. So it's it's a uh, part of also how the operator also manages tools well. So you can immediately see if, if he is uh, experienced or you even if you go to the test the post processor and program some parts, yeah. So perfect. To, um, to position six, number six, hundreds. And uh, I'll just do the finish, right? So I just, let's see what I've done here. Okay, I have additional links here. I think I will do just with the tangent. Okay, it's good looking now, but I have here this uh, uh, link, so I don't need even that link between the area areas. So we use in the current path, and let's see. Nice. Okay, I have a few drilling operation here. It's very good that you have uh, like this place with this uh, drills so you can test, for example, Y axis. It's very important or ideally because it can be very different. So that is uh, some recommendation to, to the post processor developers. And I will do now drilling. Yep, I'll create a new tool on this. On the same turret. Same tool seven. And again, change, sorry about it. New. Can be end mill. Then zero zero, also the H length. Let's see with the diameter. It's five. Okay. Upper level and drill that. Okay.
And we have one more thing to do, it's this uh, wrap geometry. I'll select the pocket. Here with the wrap, we need the Mach 1 position one, which will be wrapped around Z direction. And I'll change, I'll use <clears throat> this chain. I think the formula matter is okay. I'll change the rest to this one, 8, 800, and the outside holder, same as previous one, and 30, same as outside holder, H limit. Okay. I'll select the level, select the path, and I will just calculate to see. Okay, it looks pretty nice. You need to just increase so it can be finest, right? Maybe some angling rampings. And on the level, I don't need much safety on to approach immediately. Let's see. Approach is very good, very close. On foreign machines, this Swiss type are very precise machines. And the finish, yeah. Okay, perfect. I need just to do the finish on this side. So since my guide bush, if, if you can imagine, it's somewhere here from the front, then I don't want any more, if, you, I, if I want to, to start turning from this side and finish this geometry here, so I can finish this, this diameter, I will not start from this side because I will put it again, uh, my eye part inside the guide bush. So I will just start immediately here and do the finishing from left to right moment. Okay, so let's, let's do it. Turning, I'll use same geometry as I did before. Tool is the same again. But I will use the finish only. So here is up. Okay, but the the direction is not what I want. So, but I will do reverse geometry. I will not need this for now. I will do one and a half millimeter here. And the link, as we spoke, only X and X on leave the material. Okay, so my part here is practically done. So I go now from my left side and finish it on the right. I can maybe just increase some tangential for the exit moment. Nice. Okay, so let's check all of our operations. And with this last operation, we did the in the two sections, we done every single uh, operation that we can done on uh, this map uh, from this side of the uh, main spindle. Yeah. So after this, will immediately comes the MCO. I just spoke to you if I can remind you on uh, on our um, cutoff tree. So now we finish all the operation on the main spindle. In the next webinar, we will cover the uh, operations uh, regarding the cutoff and MCO operations and, uh, and the backspin operation together with the channel, synchroni uh, channel synchronization, right? So, okay, let's do one more simulation on the solid verify and check all the moments if I have some collision between my parts and the tool. 
I think not. It's very nicely done. So here we are done. I will now play the machine simulation so you can check in. In, in the meanwhile, please uh, write some uh, some question if you have some comments in the in the section there so I can answer if you have some and with this I'm I'm finished. <clears throat> Just to simulate one more time every operation in the machine simulation. So as you can see, my part is always somewhere in the front of the head bush and I am not returning all the time back with some retracts, right? We will do segment by segment and that's the way how you program everything on the main spindle. Now move to the second section with this chamfer to break the edge drilling. And finishing left to right. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, Sydney, I'm done here with the presentation and showcase. If you uh, Igor, thank you very, very, very much. Because uh, this was an excellent, <laughs> uh, excellent, excellently done, and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, part two because this is. Uh, uh, you made it look. You made it look very easy to do, which is the whole yeah. idea. Yeah. Nice. That was the whole idea behind it. Thank uh, you. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Th okay, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar. Again, this has been recorded, and it will be available on our website later on. Everyone, have a great weekend, and we'll see you for part two. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.